In the last video, we looked at the ability to uh, create a car. Uh, we have the ability to choose an image for a car, not a car image, but a work. And when we hit submit, we linked it up so that we could change scenes and pass this car object into the new scene. So here's our car object, pass the new scene. Um, in this video, what I want to do is populate a list of all my cars, all of the different vehicles uh, on a car lot uh, into this, this list view object. So to do this, here we have a list view object. The list view object can hold any type of list. Um, the list view object itself holds what's called an observable list. And we can use that observable list and just add from any other type of list. Uh, so it's very it's a very easy to work with uh, type of product uh, or, or class. Um, <clears throat> the key is where do we keep a list of all cars? Now, if I were building this um, as some kind of application to hold, um, you know, maybe it's for a, a specific dealership or you know something like that, then I would create a class called dealership or car lot or something along those lines. And that class would have things such as, you know, the street address, the manager, um, you know, a link to all the employees I would have in there, uh, a list to track all of my car objects. That would be the robust way of doing it. For, for this assignment, really all we need is this, this idea of a persistent, um, persistent uh, list of all the cars so that when, whether I move into this all cars view, or I go back and create new cars, I still have a persistent list. Um, one way of doing that would be to connect to a database. Um, that's going a little beyond the, uh, the scope of the course for, for this semester. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create a list that I can always access. And the way that I'm gonna do that is in my launch class, I'm going to create a static list of cars. And I'm going to create a little simple method here um, that allows me to get that list of cars. Okay, so I have an array list of car objects. Now I've made this static so that I do not need to create instances of this launch class. This will always be accessible. I can, you know, no matter where I am in my code, I can. Uh, and basically, just say, well, launch dot, um, you know, get cars. And it will access this method, which accesses this static list that's shared by all of the uh, launch classes. So let's go to our new car controller. Because when I create a new car, so I'm going to go to my method here, submit button, press right, I'm creating a new car object here. So if I complete this line of code, okay, I didn't trigger an exception, so it didn't trigger the try catch, then I have a valid car object. So what I can do is I can say launch, get the cars. So now I have access to that array list of cars, and I can add my new car. Okay. So this array list is accessible. The other thing actually I, I, I did forget to mention is that in my main method, okay, so right now in my main method, all I do is launch um, the application. I'm going to initialize this. So it gets initialized just one time. So I'm gonna say cars equals new car, or new array list. So when the program is launched, because this method is only gonna be called the one time, it'll give me a new array list. And then every time I create a new car, I'm going to add it to that array list. And just for demonstrating how this works, I'm going to uh, just say down below, uh, launch, get cars. I'm just going to print it to the console just to show you how this works. So program runs, I load my default car, I hit submit, and there's, there's my array list, OK? I have one vehicle in it now. And, oh, I can't go back. <laughs> okay, 
we're going to need to add a button to get back to my array list. But uh, the idea here is for sure we uh, just disable changing scenes for a second. That's going to trigger a lot of other changes. So let's not worry about it. Um, <clears throat> in my all cars controller now, when this method is called, okay, I am passing in the specific car that I just created as the selected car. But I can also, I can also connect up the list view. So here, my list view under FX ID, I'm going to, since I only have one list, in this case, I'm going to call it list view. You may choose uh, to call it, you know, uh, something like all cars list view or list view of all cars or something along those lines. So now I can say at FXML private list view. And here's the important thing. This list view, I want it to hold car objects. I can't get information about a car if this is a generic list. It'll just think it's an object. So I have to make sure to initialize it to tell it that it's about cars. And we called it list view. So now in my selected car, so this is the, the method that's called when we're passing in information, I can say, list view, get items. And what this does is the list view, it's, it's initialized in the FXML file, right? That it's defined here, it's given this list view ID. So that will, every time the scene loads, it's going to create a new list view object, which has an observable list in it. So when I say get items, this has returned an observable list. So then I can say add all, right? and the add all method allows me to pass in a list. So I can, again, call my launch class, get the cars. This returns an array list of cars. Okay, so this returns me an observable list that can hold cars, and then I'm going to have the add all method to receive an array list of cars. So now my list view has it's it's it has all of these cars in it. So let's hit play. Create a default vehicle, hit submit. So now when I go in, here's the vehicle that was just uh, was just pat just created. And in my list view, here's all my potential vehicles. Now I don't have a way to go back to create more vehicles, so my list view is very small. So what I do is I'll add in a button here, to take me back to the other scene. So <clears throat> if we go to our launch class here, you can see, um, oops, I'm gonna leave that there. This, this method here uh, basically allows us to load a scene. So copy this with my all cars controller here. Um, do 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 change a new car. So again, always make sure with these action events, you're getting the Java FX one. Yeah. <clears throat> now we're going to run into the same uh, scenario that we, we ran into before, whereby um, we have this load method that has, it throws what's called an IO exception. And so if I hit Alt Enter, it'll show me my options and I'm going to add the exception to the method signature. So this, this way we, identify that this method can throw an IO exception, meaning if that happens, our program is going to crash and we're okay with it. And 
you can see it's, it's, it's highlighting all this in yellow because we actually have basically the exact same information in uh, the launch class. So it's, it's really suggesting, hey, maybe you just, just use, that, uh, use that code, don't duplicate your code. So the one thing that we need to do is get our stage. <clears throat> in, in the launch class, that stage is passed into the method automatically. Here, we can get it from the event. So we're going to say stage, primary stage equals So we'll ask our event to get its source and, <clears throat> and then we will get the scene and then we can get the window. Okay. So that just that allows us to uh, basically ask the button to get the stage that it's connected to. And then here we can update this to say, create new car. And then we set the scene and then we say show and it'll change back to the other scene. So what do we need to do now is connect this up to something. So we've got a V-box here. Let's go to our controls, go up, find a button. There's a button, I'm gonna just drag it into my V-box. It'll automatically go down there. And on the button, let's say create new car. And we can change the font on both of these if we want. A little bigger, 18 or so. And when we click this on action, what we want to do, why isn't it seeing this method? There we go, new car button pushed. So when there's an action on the button, it's going to go to the controller. It's going to call this method. This method is going to call the new car view.fxml and load it and set up the stage. All right. Save. Hit play. Load a default car. Let's put in default image. Hit submit. <laughs> we're, we're actually seeing. A little confusing just because uh, this was in the pattern here. Uh, so it, it jumped to the scene, it gave us our sticker number, the make and model, and there's the image of, of that vehicle, which happens to be a skier in this case. Uh, we're going to create a new car, it's going to bring me back to the scene. Um, uh, I don't know, Ford Escort. Um, and maybe the year is 2017. And our sticker number automatically updated. That was in a previous video, how to handle that. Let's choose a different, uh, a different image um, for this vehicle, just so that it's, it's easy to see when we hit submit. Now it comes in here <clears throat> and we can see here's the vehicle we just created. And now you can see our list of vehicles is expanding. And here where I was printing out that array list, you can see now it's added different elements into that array list. And if I do it one more time, we're gonna see another vehicle. Um, uh, so let's see what's in our, uh, do a CX-5 and hit submit. So now we can see, we can see that we can see our three vehicles we've created. Um, and in here we can see the, uh, uh the different, the array list is, is continuing to grow. So that's, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to show about how do we connect. So when I click on these items, how do we update the information over here?